I am grateful for each and every one of you. My soul is nourished in your presence, and my soul is nourished by your presence. Together you create a safe and sacred space, whether we're at Hammock Hill, the ravine, or where are we now? <laughs> Westminster Hall. No, it's not the building. As a faith community, you are extremely important. The extravagant welcome that you offer to absolutely everyone is liberating. The opportunity that you provide so that anyone can belong is life-giving. My prayer for you is that you stay strong, that you stay connected, because you are needed now. We are needed now, more than ever. Together we can make this world a better place. So thank you for your presence, thank you for your commitment, thank you for creating space for everyone. You are blessed, and you are blessings. You have been blessed so that you can be a blessing. What it means to be a blessing is something that I think a lot about. I spent a lot of time wondering what it looks like, what it feels like, what it means. Not just to be blessed, to, but to be a blessing. How do we know when we've been blessed? How do we know when we've been a blessing? And does it always feel like a good thing? That's kind of the idea I was brought up. Blessings are good things. They're feel-goods. You may understand blessing in a different way. But it is a concept, a phrase, that I both hear a lot and I say it a lot. I have friends who, when I ask them, how are you, they respond with, I'm blessed. Do you have friends who respond to you that way? I'm blessed. I often wonder, what do they mean? <laughs> the idea of being blessed and the idea of being a blessing is at the core of my theology, with my theology being my understanding of hope and wholeness and healing and holiness. So in my way of thinking, each of us are blessed from birth with gifts and talents that are meant to be shared. And to be a blessing, again, in my way of understanding, in order to be a blessing, in my way of understanding, we need to be connected to, aware of, and sensitive to that divine, invisible energy which surrounds us, moves through us, and moves with us. Because we do have a choice. We do have a choice. We can move with that good energy or we can resist it. I really do believe it is the energetic spirit of hope, healing, and wholeness which activates our ability to be connected and to move together and to bless others. So how do we know when that's happening? What does it feel like? What does it look like to be a blessing or to do good things, if that's better language? I wonder if we were to create a list together, a list titled, How to Know When You're Blessed, what we would put on it. I wonder how we would respond to the prompt, I know I'm a blessing when. How would we answer that? Because I am a Christian, I rely upon the words, the wisdom of Jesus, 
when I am exploring questions like this. And in the Christian Bible, there is a list of statements made by Jesus which describe what it means to be blessed. We call this list the Beatitudes. And it's part of a larger story which is traditionally called the Sermon on the Mount. So here's the list according to the good news of Matthew. And I share from the updated New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. <laughs> and I love the way it starts out, because I'm sure Jesus is an introvert. Is anyone in here an introvert? The way it starts out, when Jesus saw the crowds, he climbed up the mountain. You got it. He climbed up the mountain. Love it, love it, love it. He went up the mountain, he sat down. And then his students came and he began to teach them. Blessed are the poor in spirit. I learned this in childhood, so I'm back to the King James, even though I said it's the updated New Revised Standard. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom, or the kingdom, which I prefer, of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see the holy. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of the light. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I wonder what you think about that list. Especially the last one. Blessed are the persecuted. That sound like a blessing? Sounds kind of uncomfortable to me. As does feeling blessed because of mourning. Or feeling blessed because we're hungry and we're thirsty for righteousness. I found an alternative list recently created by a Baptist minister, Simon Woodman. And to me it was just as surprising. I'll just read a couple of them. I did bring the entire list, though. I, I brought some. I wasn't very green. I brought you each a copy. Here's a couple of his. Blessed are those who refuse the lie that one life is worth more than any other. Theirs is the future of humanity. Blessed are those who have long stared into the abyss. Theirs is honesty beyond grief. Blessed are those who resist retaliation, for the earth will never be won by force. Blessed are those who forgive the unforgivable, for they have seen the darkness of their own souls. Blessed are you when you stand up for the truth, and hell itself decides to try and destroy you. Yikes. Want me to read that one again? Blessed are you when you stand up for the truth and hell itself decides to try and destroy you. When we stand for the truth, we are actively being a blessing. Do you agree? Is it possible that we know when we are being a blessing because hell itself is rising up and trying to destroy us? Is that a possibility? Is that part of the heavenly, holy, healing design, do you think? That's some pretty countercultural thinking from where, the way I understand the world. Say that again. You got it. John Lewis. Yep. That's exactly right, Jim. The wisdom and the willingness to be countercultural will land you in good trouble. 
That seems to be the theme which holds both our capacity to be blessed, our blessedness, and our ability to be a blessing together. Blessed are the countercultural because they will be extremely uncomfortable. I wrote that one. And the Jesus that I know and follow, because that's a question we ask a lot in my church, which Jesus? Which Jesus are you following? The one I follow is and was always countercultural. He was always pushing back against the status quo. He was always pushing back against the higher ups by advocating for the ones below. And you know what? It always got him in trouble. That's why, in my opinion, it is so important for us to be able to notice, recognize, and name what is cultural, what is countercultural, what is tradition, what is untraditional, what is harmful and habitual and what is new and different and life-giving. That brings me right back here to you. The All Souls Faith Community with your clearly and carefully articulated counter-cultural mission, vision, and value statement, which I read on your website. That doesn't move slow, Jim. I don't know when the last time you looked at that is, but what it says to me is that you as a group decided together that you are blessed enough to be a blessing and that together you have decided to be a blessing by creating space for everyone, regardless of affectional and sexual orientation. This is Pride Month. There's space for everyone, regardless of age, color, gender identity. We're back to the sexual ex expression. Nationality, origin, physical or mental ability. There's space for everyone here, regardless of race, sex, or religious belief. That's who you are on your website. So, if the Beatitudes are true, you will know as a group that you are effective when you find yourself in good trouble. You'll know you're listening, living into your missional statement when you find yourself in situations that are uncomfortable. Because again, blessed are the countercultural because they will be uncomfortable. It takes a strong group of committed people to hold space for others to explore their own spirituality it takes sacrifice, it takes willingness, and it takes determination. Not just one, everyone. We do this work together. It's dangerous out there. We don't go alone. It takes a lot of self-discipline, self-reflection. Actually, I will say it takes community to treat everyone with respect and kindness. And it takes a lot of wisdom, respect, and kindness to hold a sacred and safe space so all of us can come in here <laughs> at some point and say, you know what, I screwed up. I blew that. Kudos to you. Blessed are the countercultural, for they will encounter good trouble. You know, it's important to notice that none of the Beatitudes encourage us to cause trouble, right? They say we will be blessed with trouble. And I don't know about you, this is important to me because I was raised to not get in trouble. Anybody else? Right. So there we go with our culture again. My culture told me, be nice, don't get into trouble. So for those of you who may have been raised differently, you need to teach us how to respond to trouble, if you know how to do it in healthy ways. 
I had to learn, right? I had to learn to navigate trouble. I had to learn, and I am still learning, how to navigate pushback, how to recognize my own triggers. And I'm still learning to recognize trouble and pushback and conflict as a sign that I am actually in sync with that which is whole and holy and divine. I have to remind myself. I love that word. I have to remind myself that discomfort is a holy sign. Blessed are those who are persecuted for doing the right thing. Blessed are those who are per persecuted for building up the kingdom. Blessed are you when you stand up for the truth and hell itself tries to destroy you. There's like a million different versions of the Bible. Did you know that? So I looked at the cotton patch. This is how the cotton patch says it. The group that has an appetite for doing what is right are holy people, and they will have plenty to chew on. Right? There's another version called the Five Gospels, which preface the Beatitudes with this statement. In the eyes of the Holy One, there are certain groups of people who are special. In the eyes of the Holy One, these special people are covered with divine favor. And so when they list the Beatitudes, instead of saying blessed are, they say congratulations. Congratulations to the poor in spirit. The ways of heaven belong to them. Congratulations to those who hunger and thirst for justice. There is a feast for you. Congratulations when they denounce you, persecute you, and spread malicious gossip about you. Congratulations. Now you know what it means to be part of the holy kingdom. The First Nations version of the Bible. An indigenous translation. Refers to the holy kingdom as the good road. Creator's blessing rests on you who are poor and in need. The good road is yours. Walk it. Creator's blessing rests on you when you are hated and rejected, looked down on and treated as worthless because you've chosen to walk the good road. When this happens, let your hearts be glad and jump for joy. So the common themes being countercultural, experiencing good trouble, being uncomfortable. These are all signs of blessedness and being a blessing. Sometimes I really struggle with what the Bible calls good news. That doesn't always sound like good news, but it's not always good news for me. It's good news for others. The eternal light does not shine on a path that is easy. The spirit of hope and wholeness does not reinforce either my privilege nor my comfort zones. Divine energy does not allow for complacency. The good road, the ways of the kingdom, do not elevate my self-interest. I struggle. <laughs> with what the Bible calls good news. What I never struggle with is my respect, gratitude, and hope for you, this congregation, for what you do, who you stand with, and who you stand for. So I'm going to close with the blessing, which you may or may not want to receive. It's okay, you can plug your ears if you don't want to hear this. May you be blessed with discomfort at easy answers and half-truths and superficial relationships so that you may live deep in the heart. May you be blessed with anger 
at injustice, at oppression, at exploitation of people, so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May you be blessed with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, and war. So that when you reach your hands out to embrace and comfort them, their pain is transformed to joy and hope, healing, and wholeness. And may we be blessed with enough foolishness to believe that we really can make a difference in this world and that we can do what others say cannot be done. And the holy ones respond by saying, Amen, which means, may it be so. And the holy ones respond with, Ashe, which means, it will definitely be so.